Hello and welcome. You join us from the picturesque village of Christ Hospital, just outside the station beside the Arran Valley line. We will be walking the full 19 miles between Christ Hospital and Shoreham by Sea, following the old track bed of the Stenning line through the gorgeous Sussex countryside, from the wooded area of North Sussex, through the fields and onto the south coast of this historic county. Along the way, giving facts and showing you historical footage of this once quaint railway line. You can see where we are currently and where we are heading. Intermediate stops being Southwater, Copsell, West Grinstead, Partridge Green, Henfield, Stenning, Bramber and Shoreham by Sea. First fact, the Stenning line opened on the 1st of July on the 7th of March 1966, serving the local communities for 105 years. It shut due to the rise of people getting cars and other road vehicles, which were much preferred over the old and slow train. But times are changing once again. So, without further ado, let's get going on its journey to the coast. And first stop is Southwater in around 2.3 miles. The first part of the journey takes us along the road towards the Christ Hospital School, which was founded in 1552. At this point, we are off the railway as the Stenning line hasn't yet split off from today's line. Once we are off the road, we come onto a path passing the school with its tower very much in sight. Then we walk alongside the railway for a few hundred metres before we come up to the original, original Itchingfield Junction. This is where we split off away from the Arran Valley line and head southeast towards the large village of Southwater. It's a steady downhill gradient and a distance of around 2 miles. Making our way along the first proper section of track bed now, there are signs of what came before. The obvious one being that we are on an embankment. We can also see a road bridge crossing over the line which was built long before the railway shut. Cattle creeks are also present as we progress further along. These allow the safe passage of animals from one side of the line to the other. The most relaxing thing about walking along railways is that they tend to be flat, or to the eye at least. Mooching along as we pass many pastures and farms which have once been neighbours with the railway since the beginning. As we approach Southwater we come across something that is very common on abandoned railways, a new housing development. With the building of the railways many villages became towns and places grew and grew, now even onto the railways that first started the boom. A reason for this was that people could easily travel into the local town or city, so no, no longer had to live within the city and could work, uh, well, could travel to work with ease. And as we come into the centre of Southwater, we go under a very suspicious looking station bridge, and under that a small part of the original platforms. Back in the 1960s, Southwater's population was relatively small, and most of the people living there were working in the clay pits. Nowadays, the village centre is a nice modern place to meet people, being redeveloped back in, back in 2006, with plenty of shops and eateries and other pleasant places to sit down and chill out and meet with people. We are now here on the map, you can see it on the screen, so still a considerable distance to go, around 17 miles. The next stop along is Copsell, which is around 1.2 miles away, so let's continue on this disused railway ramble. Now leaving the centre of Southwater, there is another big clue to what came before, one of the roads next to the track being named Station Road. We run between Station Road and Southwater Country Park, a great place to take the family or go for a chilled out walk, even to go onto the lakes. One thing which made Southwater was the brickworks. This shut down in the 1980s and left behind a few clay pits, which if you hadn't figured out by now, the clay pits are actually the Country Park lakes. So everything they dug out years ago, you can now boat on. This is where we start to leave Southwater, next to the road you can see the old bridge abutment still standing today, although only on one side, meaning the other was luckily taken down or has been lost to nature. And then we then come back onto the embankment due to the little deviation near the country park due to the dual carriageway being built, which means vehicles can bypass Southwater. The track bed has been built over, meaning we have to go off the course of the railway and dive uh, under the A24. Once under the A24 we then come back onto the embankment and then back into the countryside and away from the bustle of Southwater. And we now had a short way along to Copsell and at this point we are heading back onto the embankment and then on that the rest of the way to Copsell 
which is fairly close as we continue our journey. We soon enter the hamlet of Cropsell. Not really a lot going on here and truly is a small little place with the village hall, a post box and an old pub which has now been demolished and turned into a home. Although outside the original pub location an old sign can be seen called The Bridge showing an image of a steam train going across the road which would have been right here. Copsell did not really have a railway station hence the way it hasn't grown much in many years it has been about but instead cut through um, by the line. Not a lot of information on the hamlet although looking at the houses and buildings around it definitely predates the railway probably housing the more affluent workers of the clay pits and slowly built up as the railway came through. And out of Copsell you can see where we are now on the map we're about three miles away from Christ Hospital so it's been about an hour's walk so far and still 15 miles away from Shoreham. The next stop being West Grinstead which is just under two miles away. So we now start to leave Copsell and are heading back up onto the embankment uh, and heading to West Grinstead. This section of the route is quite wooded and not a lot can be seen. Uh, you are on the quite a high embankment at this point. Just like on previous sections you can hear Cattle Creek. As not a lot can be seen or said about on this section let's have a fact. The line was opened in two phases between Shoreham and Partridge Green in July 1861. The second section from Partridge Green to Itchingfield Junction, uh, that is where we came off uh, where Christ Hospital was towards Southwater, that's, that's the junction. And the second section, yeah, in October 1861. And another fact before we arrive at West Grinstead in 1863, British Rail carried out a survey to see how the line was doing when it came to number of passengers. They did it in two halves, one during the summer and one in the winter. In both it was between 12,000 and 13,000, although during school holidays significantly lower due to the most school kids taking the train to school, which as opposed to that other lines was not really that profitable. And into the most revealing part of the trip so far, the amazing station here at West Grinstead which has been kept nearly, well near enough intact. Uh, with well, the platform at least, although it is slowly falling into disrepair with barriers now stopping you from going up onto the platforms which are fairly a fairly recent addition. You could before get onto the um, platforms and stand and sit on them. You can also now see a semaphore signal which was handed to the path by a local farmer and also a railway coach can be seen, specifically a Mark 1 in Southern Green. Even better, there is a little bit of track underneath. And then within the coach there is a little model railway layout and also a little place where you can get drinks although during this time of the pandemic it doesn't seem to be open. There isn't a lot of videotape of West Grinstead station although we do have a couple of images which can be seen showing the two platforms with the footbridge over the top and the station house. Uh, West Grinstead also had a cattle loading area to the north of the platform which is now where the coach is. You can see a little information panel uh, which is sort of where just in front of where it would have been and the station was opened on the 16th of September 1861 and closed the day the railway shut on the 7th of March 1966 lasting 105 years. And this is where we are now, not even halfway on our journey and we've already discovered a gem now being around 13 miles from Shoreham and the next stop on our journey being the village of Partridge Green which is around two and a half miles from West Grinstead. Due to the road being widened and improved, the old bridge was demolished and is said now you have this which takes you under the A272. As we make our way from West Grinstead station we actually get closer to the actual hamlet of West Grinstead as the station was built slightly further back from where the village actually is. We head through a woodland area before it starts to open up to open fields, even getting a glimpse of the towering South Downs uh, where we will be going past later on in our journey. As we head along we come across the usual cattle creeks and even seeing this lone tree in the field reminding you of some sort of PC background. This is the beauty of travelling on old railways, seeing the beautiful countryside all around, a great chance to explore the country if visiting from abroad or even if you're local come and enjoy the outside as well as get away from the city of London and just get away from the busy places and just enjoy what the countryside has to offer. As we get closer to the village of Partridge Green we come back into a woodland and onto a raised embankment. Another fact about the line is that Southern did excursion services which came down from London to the South Downs via the Stenning line. 
These were special as they meant people wanting to see the magnificent sunrise once they got to Stenning they would disembark and walk up to the Chanctonbury Ring to get a view of the sunrise um, over the channel. At this point we walk along a few hundred metres or so then come off the track bed and walk along the road. This is as there is now an industrial estate on the original path um, and also where the station once was you can see uh, the house is uh, where it is now. And this is where the station once was, just to the right of the road bridge, which runs, uh, which once went across the railway, now nothing. And here is the station at Partridge Green in all its glory. This being shot back in 1966, a couple of months before the line shut, subsequently meaning the end of the station. The station opened on the 1st of July 1861 and has two platforms, a signal box and a couple of sidings for uh, freight storage. And just a short walk along the road is the village uh, the station serve. Quite a small quaint village, although has grown over the years a little, having just six houses back in 1840. Although the name originates back to 1332, when a family with the name of Partridge owned the, owned the land where the village is now built on. The railway really grew the village. Uh, anyways, back to the line. So you can see where we are on the map again. Uh, around seven and a half miles from Christ Hospital, so it's been about two hours since we started our walk. Uh, and the next stop is the largest of the villages, which is Henfield. For the next 200, 300 metres, we are walking alongside the road due to the building over on the railway's original path. Then after turning off the road, it's a short walk to reach the old track bed again. And now we're back onto the original course of the railway. Surprisingly, we are going up a gradient at the moment, which it doesn't seem like. It almost seems like you are sort of just flat going the whole way along. But that is, well, sort of how railways worked. The grade had to be really gradual, as otherwise the train's wheels wouldn't be able to grip and then you wouldn't get very far. At this point in the journey, we are just about halfway between Christ Hospital and Shoreham. And here we stumble upon an old pillbox which dates back to the Second World War when Home Guard soldiers used to stand guard 24-7 and anticipate the German invaders to come up the river and along the railway on their way to London. Fortunately that never did happen although the pillbox still stands guard while slowly crumbling apart. And this is where the railway first crosses the River Ada. While we still follow all the way down to Shoreham, the bridge was a target for German bombers in the war. Back to the river, the river starts just north of where the Stenning Line begins, starting at Slinfold, uh, which is actually on the Cranley Line, so that's just past uh, Christ Hospital. Uh, and it runs 20 miles down to Shoreham. The name is thought to be from a Roman fort named Portus Aderni. And then carrying on from the bridge we head into a bit more of a wooded area on a slight embankment still making our way uphill as we head towards Henfield. Not too much to spot on this section apart from the embankment as well as a small cutting. Even another pillbox nestled within the undergrowth which is sort of just hiding there. Just before we reach Henfield we climb up and dive it off the track bed. This is where the old station has now been built over. Luckily there is some old photos of the station, unfortunately no old footage. But yes, here we are, we can see the old Henfield station opened in 1861 and closed in 1966. The station was fairly small, only having two platforms. You can see where we are on the map now, just under 9 miles to Shoreham. The next stop being Stenning, which is just over half of the total distance now to Shoreham being 4.8 miles away. And once you actually do come off the track bed, we do walk past the old railway pub, which sort of gives away what used to be in place and has some old semaphore replicas on the side of it. The pub is situated on the junction of Upper Station Road and Station Road, another clue about what was once in its place. We then walk down Station Road, which passes the old bus garage down to where the eastern end of the station was within the Beechins. Quite ironic, the name as Dr. Beechins was the one who shut down the railways. And a little bit about Henfield before we do pass it, it's a village not to miss. During the Great Survey of England and Wales, requested by William the Conqueror back in 1086, at the time Henfield was already quite a large village of around 52 houses. And then within the last published census of 2011, Henfield had around 5,300 people living there, only 300 up since the last census in 2001 which probably has gone up a fair bit now as there has been a fair amount of development in the area, unfortunately. 
It has an old high street with plenty of cosy pubs and shops and a good place to stop for lunch I'd say. Making our way out of Henfield we come across a little cafe which is a nice place to stop and get something to eat or drink with a good view of the downs and where we're going to be heading uh, further on in the walk. We continue our journey making our way through the cutting and then straight onto a steep embankment with the usual appearance of a cattle creek uh, which did allow cattle to get from one side of the line to others uh, as, well as, as, well, as well as other you know, farmers getting through as well. This first section to Stenning is fairly wooded although as we go along it opens up a bit uh, we come closer to the river's passage and we also get a good view of the downs. This is where we again cross the River Ada. You can see the original bridge abutment still in place as well as the steel structure crossing the river which is all rusted away now uh, and slowly, slowly wearing away. And then after crossing the river again, we carry on for another 300 meters or so before we have to deviate off the track bed and head on to a detour for the remainder of the section to Stenning. This is where we turn off. You can see you've got all the trees there. You can well, you can quite uh, you can quite clearly see the railway used to continue straight through there, but uh, we have to come off because the track bed is privately owned, unfortunately. Making our way away from the railway and heading up this farm track, which does give you a good view of Lansing College, uh, as well as the Beading Cement Works funnel, which we will be passing uh, later on in our journey. We walk along this farm track for a few hundred metres. This is one of the few places where you aren't actually able to be on the track bed in a rural section, as usually it's more in the built up areas where you have to deviate off away from the railway. So a bit unfortunate, but yeah, it does give you good views of the downs as we get ever much closer. I mean, the downs almost directly on our right now. Soon to be passing the downs as we head towards the coast. This is the point where we stumble across a bridge still standing over the track bed as it has for years on end. And this was the approach into Stenning Station. You can quite clearly see where the track bed sort of cut off through the fields uh, from where we last did, well, where we had to come off of it. And we will come across soon into State Stenning Station. For the last part of this journey into Stenning, there isn't an awful lot to see and quite an awful smell as well. Uh, we pass uh, the old bus depot uh, and a, yeah, a rather smelly sewage treatment plant. Also this rather interesting sign, um, which yeah, it does say uh, you will be shot if you trespass and survivors will be shot again. That probably is more comedic than serious. I mean, it could be serious though. This is the point where we go off the path and hunt for the old station or at least any remains of it. So yeah, so we head away from the Downs Link only by a few hundred metres and we head up uh, the road over the Stenning Bypass which does quite suspiciously look like the railway and it is. Um, once the railway um, shut uh, more traffic was passing through Stenning as obviously everyone was now taking the car, you couldn't get on the train so it was much more busier and the by bypass is built on the track bed and just around the corner in the old market field which was once a field now just a housing estate when we come across the usual station road then shortly after this we come into a closed name market field and we see something truly wonderful the old Stenning Station Warehouse this being the only remnants of the old station site uh, this being covered uh, or converted into somewhere for people to live but looking truly stunning there and you can see an old map of the station from 1880 you can see the whereabouts of the warehouse on the old layout and this is what the station used to look like opened in 1861 and closed at the same time the railway closed in 1966 it had two platforms as well as the warehouse to the side of the station which also has a siding to load goods on trains a little bit about the town and station it served, it's a fairly small town and has a population of around 5,990, so only slightly more than Henfield, although that was the last census in 2011, so it's likely seeded 6,000 now. It's a very old settlement dating back to Anglo-Saxon times and actually once used to have its own Saxon port, but that's no longer there due to the lower river of the Ada being stilted up stopping the ease of larger vessels getting up the river so the port is now subsequently down in Shoreham at the mouth of the river Ada. Now leaving Stenning the, this, this next section is the shortest of the journey being only around half a mile to Bramber to Shoreham it is just a, over four and a half miles. So we now make our way out of Stenning getting back onto the Downs Link. The railway ran where the bypass now is so not easily accessible on foot and especially safely. 
making our way through Stenning towards Bram, but we see signs of a castle. The main hint um, being this lane being called Castle Lane. On the last little stretch to Bramber Station, we walk past the mound where Bramber Castle once grandly sat upon. And this is where Bramber Station once was, now a roundabout on the bypass. This is the station when it was still around, a small two platform station serving the village of Bramber. You can clearly see where the st uh, castle mound in the background. Like Stenning, it was opened in 1861 and closed in 1966. Now a little bit about the castle, as we, you can't miss it. Bramber Castle first came about in 1073 and was built by the Normans, having recently arrived in the UK in 1066 after the Battle of Hastings, a very, very famous battle in English history. The castle had a, well it was a moat design to it which is now barely visible, as well as a curtain wall which was an outer defensive wall to the main castle. This outer wall collapsed in the early 1500s due to an outer wall being constructed in 1209, slowly over that 300 years or so weakening the land, uh, well consequently meaning it collapsed. Since then the castle has slowly crumbled as well as castle stones being used for other things around the area leading to what we have today. The village itself has a small population of 753, although that was of 2011, so it's likely risen. Oh, and that also includes the small settlement of Bottlefields to the south, which is another small, tiny village. This is now the last section to Shoreham, being just over 4 miles and now just under 15 miles from Christ Hospital. We say goodbye to Ramba as we head further south, and we also soon get back onto the path of the railway, crossing the bypass and heading into the countryside again. Views around here are fantastic of the Downs and the surrounding countryside. And this is where we meet the South Downs Way, uh, the staggering 100 mile track along the Downs between Eastbourne in the east and Winchester in the west. Walking along a short stretch of the South Downs Way, which takes, up, uh, takes us up across the bank of the Ada, and then we then cross the Ada going across the bridge. Uh, and this is a slight deviation from the course of the railway, which did uh, continue further south from where that South Downs Way sign was. It continued down there and crossed the river slightly later on. Once we have crossed the river, we stay on this side for all of the way into Shoreham. The most striking feature on this part of the journey is the beading cement works, which can be seen all abandoned and left to crumble where it stands. It's also haunted. The cement works has its own yard off the main railway which can be seen in some old footage and there's also an old buffer still in place today letting people know what used to be there. The cement works was originally opened in 1851 when quarrying started. The structure we see today is part of the 1948 rebuild after the works was bombed in 1940 by the Germans which luckily didn't cause too much damage and most of the bombs were duds so they didn't explode. It is now in a very derelict state and also the largest brownfield site in the southeast. Not that it's going on with the site at the moment. And we now continue our walk alongside the river down to Shoreham. There are some great views to catch of the Lansing Cottage Chapel, which is the big building you see on the side of the adjacent hillside. Another historical structure being established in 1848. It is a boarding school for boys and girls between 13 and 18. After following the river for a fair distance, we come up to the Shoreham Bypass, which can be seen as you go along the trail, appearing as vehicles flying from a distance. And also this little statue, which you can see, or little bents actually, which you can see of a little steam train, which is quite cool. Going under the Shoreham Bypass, this was completed in the early 70s, and the South Coast A27 runs above it. This was built over the railway during its final years, before the bypass traffic on the A27 would cross over the Shoreham Toll Bridge, which still stands today and is one of the last of its kind in the world, being built in 1782, although reopened in 2008 by Prince Andrew as it underwent work. And this is just along from the bypass, around 200, 300 metres from it. There is, it, there is even some old track in place where the level crossing and the signal box once stood. And after the toll bridge, the railway climbed up to join the West Coastway line, just west of the modern day railway station. It was a very steep climb up to the station. In fact, if a train did actually end up getting stopped just after Shoreham Toll Bridge, they would have a right time trying to get started again and would usually need an extra loco to come behind and push them up the grade. So most of the time, the signal was clear and trains could get straight up the grade without an issue. And you can also see the Ada Bridge crossing over 
uh, the river. This is the modern day West Coastway line. The railway curled away from the river as it went up. One side of the old bridge can be seen, although unfortunately the other side was demolished fairly recently to make way for more housing. And a little bit about Shoreham before we do conclude. It's a coastal town with a population of just over 20,000 as of the 2011 census. Likely much higher now due to the ton of new housing which you can see all around and which has even been built on the railway unfortunately. It has an old high street with plenty of character as well as the place to moor up boats and the Ada Ferry Bridge which swings. This new bridge was completed in 2013 to replace the old original wooden one. And here we are, the end of our 19 or so mile journey, just outside Shore and by Sea Station. Hopefully you've enjoyed this documentary and perhaps maybe even learned a couple of things. And maybe you'll even consider going for a walk or cycle on the journey uh, to uh, enjoy it yourself. Apart from that, thanks all for watching and we'll see you next time.